हेलो सभी ने थैंक यू एंड वेलकम बैक टू आयुर्वेदिक हीलिंग एंड बियॉन्ड पॉडकास्ट आई थिंक दिस इज योर सेकेंड टाइम इन एंड फाइनली वी आर डूइंग इट इन पर्सन एंड नॉट ऑन जूम यस सो आई वॉन्ट टू रीविजिट द प्रीवियस कॉन्वर्सेशन विद अ फ्रेश अप्रोच एंड आई थिंक वी हैड दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन आई थिंक ऑलमोस्ट टू एंड हाफ ईयर्स अगो एंड लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स चेंज नाउ अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट फाइब्रो मेलजिया यू नो आई बीन Uh, learning more about fibromyalgia more from my patients rather than reading on books of course books do give you some insights but nothing as much as the real patient story now your story about fibromyalgia and how you recover it is one of my personal case studies that also help me to understand how a fibromyalgia patient goes through so i'm taking this opportunity to you know to have you and share the story and and i also want people who got diagnosed with fibromyalgia what how, is there a hope mm. because many patients with fibromyalgia they come with a lot of despair and yes. there is no hope yes. for that so let's start with your story what was it where did this diagnosis start and if you could put like few years that sabine that was before fibromyalgia mm. and what do you think ended up in fibromyalgia yeah. and then yeah. we go into little more details yeah okay me before the fibromyalgia i was always a very uh, positive thinking person i was very active and mm-hmm. creative and uh, for a long time i was working in the corporate wa- world and then i made the decision to have a family and have children and staying more at home and i started a new profession as a life coach and life has changed i would say dramatically to the years before having children mm-hmm. i can say that now looking back at the time you are in that uh, um, period of your life you do not think like i do now it's looking back yeah and then after some years um I don't know how it came but um pain started let's say the left shoulder was paining suddenly and actually I was 100% sure that I have a very happy and balanced life mm-hmm. but there was the pain for a while I thought oh I did uh, over exercise with the, my yoga practice because I was uh, um a very uh, strictly yoga practitioner morning and evening time and i thought it's a muscle sore hmm. but after a while let's say after two or three months i realized this pain is still there it's not going away it's at all it's not going away so it can't be a muscle sore and then i was thinking what can i do now mm-hmm. even exercising more or what should i do because i'm the kind of person i try to avoid if it's possible to go to an allopathic doctor i only uh, visit a doctor if i can't stand it anymore mm-hmm. then i tried some herbal teas and uh, some uh, natural healing methods and suddenly it was gone mm-hmm. then i thought i was successful with my own treatment mm-hmm. after a while it started with the knee Uh, then after the knee the hips and it was uh changing changing and uh, there was no no explanation for me i couldn't figure out why and mm-hmm. why what was the the root cause of it and after the years it got worse and worse till it reached the peak and then i had pains all over all the body mm. in between of course because there were always the symptoms and they got worse i went to an allopathic doctor i got some injections then let's say once a week i got my injection and for 6 weeks it was okay mm-hmm. you mean like painkillers like painkillers mm-hmm. uh, but not um, pharmaceutical ones it was always uh, either it was uh, some uh, herbs or homeopathic uh, injections and at least i had to take painkillers because i couldn't stand it anymore mm-hmm. and um 
And then I was thinking, what, what could I do? I think I met maybe five or six different doctors. And uh, it took a while till I got the diagnosis. It's fibromyalgia. Mm. Actually, it was me who found it. I see. I, I was searching in the internet. I was um, uh, watching documentaries about uh, um, patients who have uh, severe pains, all kinds of pains. And then I found uh, it was on the internet um, from a blogger um, some explanations about the, these kinds of um, pains. And it was the first time I saw the word fibromyalgia. Mm. And then I thought, that's what I have. It, because you connected with all the symptoms. Yes, that's what I have. So could you, for a layman's language, what is fibromyalgia? What is fibromyalgia? Exactly, that was my question. What is it? <laughs> what does that mean? So I went back to my doctor and I, I, I told him, I found what I have. It's fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh my God, now you found that word. Mm. I tried to avoid to tell you it's fibromyalgia because now you will read all those terrible things doctors ever have written about that disease. Mm. So that means it can't be healed. Mm. You need to live with that. Uh, this is what the medical literature yes. that is currently available yes. claims. Yes, yes. It may not be true, but that is what yes. the literature you says. You find it everywhere. Uh, you need to take painkillers, and these painkillers will damage your kidneys. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to take um, tranquilizers. And I knew this never ever I will be able to take that because I have a extremely sensitive body mm. and whatever I take your body I, reacts quickly body, body reacts sometimes it's like you you have the feeling I took uh, a bomb mm. and uh, no one can explain I mean millions of people can take uh, that medicine I cannot mm. yeah so I thought, hmm, I have a diagnosis now, but what to do with the diagnosis? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the problem then is that you can't figure it out through a blood test. Uh, you go to a scan and nothing is to see. So you think you're a hypochondria. And hypochondriac, yes, yes. And if you talk to other people, they, they watch you and uh, then they say, but you seem to me quite normal. I... I I can't uh, believe that you have these pains and uh, I was uh, regarded like I'm mad. Something to do with your mental yes. health. Yes, yes. Uh, and this made it even worse. I can imagine. Yeah. Mm. And it was really very, very bad. There were, there were weeks I couldn't walk anymore mm. and I did not know what to do. Even the painkillers did not work anymore. It, and then I tried to, I read in so many old books uh, about so many old recipes, what to do with pains. And I cut different kind of plants in my garden and, and was laying on it uh, to make it better. And, uh, but actually and did you was, try the conventional was, method as well? No. 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 Because, uh, because when I went to an allopathic doctor uh, and they looked at me and they said, um, finally, you should accept it. That's the first step. Mm. And, you know, at, uh, at that point, when you have those terrible pains and someone tells you, you need to accept it, you need to live with that, that can't, uh, never it can be cured, you think, I kill you. Mm. <laughs> so you, ha you can't trust that person. Mm. It's impossible. Because it's like I you have no choice no to choice. live with it. And they even did not listen to my, to my story. No one listened to that. And that makes you very desperate. Mm. I, was, uh, I was really very desperate. And now looking back, I feel I was in a deep depression as well. Mm. It was a very deep depression. Yeah. You think this depression also was a result of being not heard and feeling lonely? Yes. Yes, you think sure. that contributed to it? Yes, yes. And also absolutely. being labeled, something is wrong with your yes, mental health. Yes, absolutely. And uh, what was really very terrible for me, I love to do my, my work, whatever it is, whether I worked uh, in my coaching practice or I did some works in the garden or in the house. And I realized it's not possible anymore. Mm. 
I, I can't do it anymore. I, I was always tired. I felt so exhausted. It's like people describe a burnout. Mm. It was like that. Burnout so, with the pain. With the pain, yes. And uh, so there, I was at a point, I really thought I'm going to die. Mm. It was like, I felt like uh, watching a burning candle and the candle burns down and burns down. The and wax is empty. Yes. yes. Mm. So knowing what you knew so far, if somebody comes, like uh, let's say a patient comes with, now I, what I see is in the last two years, I've seen that more patients are getting diagnosed fibromyalgia and much mm. quicker than how it used to be a yeah. few years ago. Mm. And usually when they come with a diagnosis, they are in deep, like they might have been heard the story that you have to live with it, you have mm. to endure it, you know, what cannot be cured mm. has to be endured. Mm. So if somebody comes to you yeah. and knowing what you went through, mm. which is quite a similar story, yeah, and let's yeah. say somebody with fibromyalgia diagnosis mm. comes, what would be your feedback or advice or guidance to them? Hmm. Where I start now? <laughs> That's not an easy question. Uh, I think they will be going through, is there a way out? Yeah, yeah, is there a way out? Of and course there is a way out. Yes. Um, first, you should uh, figure out all the things you do not like in your life. Hmm. So what am I doing all the time? So Because I found out that so many things I thought... I love to do, I really did not like. Hmm. I did it because I thought that's my duty to do it. So you're forced to, unconscious force yes, or yes, pressure. Yes, the pressure. Uh, being a good mother, always uh, caring. I mean, I wish to be, of course, a good mother and care my children. But I think I did too much. Hmm. I forgot about my life. Hmm. Being a good partner, um, having the house always clean, um, so many things I, that was in my mind, I need to do 100%. And this is also something very important. I found out that people who have uh, fibromyalgia are all those people who have that, um, that wish doing everything 100%. You mean perfectionism? Yes. Very, very perfectly. Mm. So my friends always uh, told me when uh, we had some uh, talks, they said, we don't know how you are able to do this and this and this and this and always in such a perfection. And I thought, hmm, that's normal for me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that question. I was not aware of my own perfectionism. You mean to say that the cost of being that perfect at a very effortless stage yes yes you realized it quite later yes quite late yeah and you assume it is fibromyalgia that the price that you had to pay for it definitely definitely yeah and what's the nature of this pain the nature of this pain it's uh, you can compare it if you have a very severe flu mm -hmm. and you have body pains mm. very heavy body pains and it feels like that i see but with the flu you know yeah, After it's a few a weeks, yeah. it's over. Yes, exactly. And, and with the fibromyalgia, you see... It's indefinite. It's not going away. You go to bed with the pains. You can't sleep anymore. Maybe you sleep an hour, then you wake up. So that's another thing which is uh, bothering you a lot because you never can really recover mm. because the sleep is not giving you uh, the relaxation it should do because mm. if you sleep just one hour and then you wake up and you stay awake for two hours and then again you sleep one hour so in the morning actually you are wake up tired absolutely energyless mm. yeah. and then you need to fight with your body mm. to get a it's little like bit active and yeah there is no motivation anymore. You lose all your goals. You don't have any vision anymore. It's a very desperate life. Hmm. Yeah. Like there's a saying, it's like you're driving with full throttle on the accelerator, but the handbrake is fully it's on. Exactly. Yeah. So your engine like heats that. up. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. So now, on one hand, we are not able to diagnose this through a blood test or mm. any mm. biomarker examinations. Yeah. yeah. 
no blood test x ray mri is not mm. able to understand so we just analyze the symptoms of pain of an unknown reason unknown cause mm. and then we put together we call it fibromyalgia but at the same time you are able to connect back saying that somewhere i forgot about self care yes and i was doing things because of some unconscious belief that i have to do it even though i forgot to take care of myself mm-hmm. and that surprise that eventually led to this yeah. now if you look back f- being a life coach and also mm-hmm. you know doing so many health work including mm-hmm. ayurveda i will we'll come back to ayurveda yeah, yeah. and yoga and other yeah. uh, healing modalities but what do you think this could impact on your muscles according to you like your thoughts Mm. Is it so powerful that it can impact your muscles to such a painful yes, situation? Yes, it can. It can. Um, I think I had some uh, deep-seated patterns. One of those patterns is uh, being a victim. Hmm. So. Um, Explain that. What do you mean? Yeah, being a being victim. A victim. Uh, I mean, uh, if you interact with other people, uh, I was always the one who wanted. to make life uh, very nice and beautiful for others. Hmm. So others had uh, a very easy game to dominate me. Hmm. However, I'm a str- I would say I'm a strong person. Mm-hmm. I have a strong personality. But uh, living together with others or interacting with others, suddenly I had the feeling I need to please others. Hmm. Yeah, and then I mostly or in so many times I felt as a victim. Hmm. That's one thing. And but on the on the other side I think now I think if I would have been aware at that time that I'm playing the role of a victim I would have been aware as well that it means I'm not able in many many cases to make a clear decision for myself and for doing whatever I want. Hmm. So it's a, you know it's a very tricky situation Dance, yes. yeah uh, and now i would say being a victim is not only uh, a bad habit because i deeply believe in polarity in life mm-hmm. there are always two sides at the same time i'm not talking about dualism because dual, dualism is always black or white but polarity means black and white so being a victim means at uh, if you look at it at a, from a positive uh, a point of view i would say i had uh, the talent to adjust to any situation in life mm-hmm. i i can be very flexible but i didn't realize it so as long as you do not realize what talent you have it's always uh, coming out in a negative way and i think this was one of the main reasons what life wanted to teach me hmm. because during the whole uh, process of the sickness i had several spiritual awakenings like like um i once had a, a dream uh, about a snake mm-hmm. and uh, um that snake showed me how to move uh, very lightly and very very uh, being very flexible and and uh, i was uh, experiencing exactly the opposite because mm. i became inflexible with my body very stiff very stiff and after a while i realized my thinking is already also very stiff you mean stubborn stubborn yes i i i was i was actually in one circle i couldn't uh, get out and of that circle mm. and s- searching for people who are responsible that i'm so sick hmm. yeah and i couldn't see the positive sides anymore so that dream i was trying to to analyze it and actually that dream meant look at the snake that's you you have that talent to be so flexible you have that talent to react very sensitive in life hmm. but you don't live it anymore it's gone Hmm. or maybe i have never ever experienced it like it should be i was not aware of that talent really hmm. yeah even in spiritual uh, books when they talk about snake mm. they say it's one of the most grounded animals yeah 
ever and yeah. you know they can't hear yes. they always sense the vibrations yes. and also they have the one of the most powerful talent to escape mm. you know they can go through yes. any small yeah so the idea is you could be a powerful but at the same time when it happens you need to be flexible and yeah. find the way exactly. out yeah. yeah i mean this is a spiritual yeah. uh, meaning from yes. what snakes do yeah. but even yeah. what's poisonous and yes. other things yes so when you talk about stiffness mm-hmm. or stubbornness yes. and when we talk about the symptoms of fibromyalgia which is actually the muscles become constricted yes so when people constrict their muscles for a long period of time it it leads to a low grade pain mm-hmm. and then they realize they are not able to reverse it and mm-hmm. they are not able to let go and relax mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you look back what helped you to relax and would you say that fibromyalgia can also be termed as a condition where you're not able to relax your muscles would for that a, uh, a be a right way to say it or mm, correct for me? a long time i could not relax anymore mm. it was uh, really not possible i mean as a coach i knew so many different kind of methods i was meditating i was doing some stretching exercises but actually i came to a point where nothing was mm. possible anymore and maybe that was also a deep insight for me because uh, i always had the attitude i can do whatever in life happens i can do everything on my own mm. i couldn't accept help mm. and then i was at the point i knew there is no way to come out of that without help it's not possible that i realized and maybe for me it was necessary to make that experience as well hmm. so what was that turning point and how did that switch like there was a time when you thought i didn't know how to ask for help or maybe i also didn't want to ask for help help some people say asking for help is a kind of weakness yes yes that's one thing mm-hmm. people say and i've yeah. heard this from multiple um after stroke when they recover yeah. they realize yeah. they have no choice but to ask for help yes <laughs> and then they realize asking for help was one of the greatest lessons yeah. that they learned yeah. in that recovery process yeah. yeah so previously when you realized no i should not ask for help and then later when you when you had that aha moment it's mm-hmm. okay to ask for help yes what was that new uh, transformative thought process that you had mm. um I need to say one thing. However, all the doctors told me fibromyalgia can't be healed. I had that inner strong belief I will find a method. Mm. That was always with me. How desperate I was, but that was with me. But at that point I didn't realize it. Now when I look back, sometimes I think how did I make it out of that? And then I still remember that there was that inner voice very very little but it was still there and it said you will make it you will find a way you will find a way and that intention was strong that that was very strong um yeah and I think this is also something people with fibromyalgia sh- uh, should think of not losing the inner voice mm. I lost it for a while uh, but then it came back and having that uh, inside me that helped me uh, to realize i will make it but not on my own hmm. and uh, it's okay to it, ask for help yes it's okay to ask for help and asking someone for help that was such a great release that was uh, such a, a good feeling hmm. to be weak i thought hey now it's the first time i do not need to be the strong one uh because i was used to be the one who is always caring others uh, when i look back to my childhood to my family actually as a little child already i was caring the whole mm. family in a in a certain way how a child can do mm-hmm. it but i i did it and i was uh, I had that deep desire in me that I realized at that point I had that deep desire in me that someone comes and offers me help and says come I hug you I hold your hand I will help you mm. and I realized it at that point that I miss it so much 
and that it feels so good to feel so weak. Hmm. It feels so good to, to feel, feel so weak. weak. Yes. It's a very powerful statement. Yes. Usually we associate weakness to be equivalent to death mm-hmm. because the moment you are weak, you know, coming from that tribal mentality, yeah. you know, hunter gatherer times, if you are weak means you become available to any prey or predator to come yes. and take over you. Yeah. And showing your weakness is as good as facing death. Yeah. That was the time yeah. when our hunter gatherers were there. Mm-hmm. And in order to come out of that, usually what i've seen in many of these autoimmune conditions mm-hmm. conditions where people end up with idiopathic condi- like diseases which we do not know what is the cause yeah i've seen these pattern i can't say for everyone mm-hmm. but i have correlated these patterns mm-hmm. where patients say for me asking for help was a sign of big weakness and it took me uh, it it's almost like changing my religion mm. to really ask for help yeah. and that was their turning point in yes, their life yes but the the point is you are not when you are in that situation you are not aware of it hmm. i mean you you feel i need help now and i was uh, in such a bad condition already so there was no other chance and then experiencing that it's so good <laughs> that was really uh, a great great Uh, experience for mm-hmm. me. Now, Sabine, no, also the fact that you are a life coach, I'm asking this. You, on one hand, you'll see a lot of people who are like entitled, mm-hmm. that I will not do anything. Everybody mm-hmm. should do things for me. Yeah. And on the other hand, you have givers, like they just don't care about themselves. Mm-hmm. They do everything for others. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the idea is to find the sweet spot yes. where you are able to take care of yourself yeah. at the same time, help others yeah. in need. Yeah. Now, knowing what you went through, yeah. is there a possibility we all can reach that sweet spot? Yes, definitely. And how would you advise that? Ev- everybody can reach that. Uh, but it has to do with a lot of uh, questions about your own life. Hmm. So, first of all, I would say, are you able to make decisions just for your own benefit mm-hmm. are you able to do that i was not hmm. definitely not i was so scared about that so uh, i have chosen playing the victim for mm. that because i didn't want to do that uh, because maybe it was uh, that kind of pleasing everybody being everybody's darling or whatever um, i was not able to um, yeah making their own decisions and another it, it can be a habit um to to choose a disease not to be in, instead of being active mm. in my case it was and if i look back now i realize my mother had the same habit mm. i'm quite sure i took it over from her generational pattern yes yes it i mean you grow up with that and it's so it's so common for you so you do the same thing even nowadays when i when i have some troubles with uh, other people and i do not find a solution immediately hmm. i'm not very patient with myself <laughs> and i always want to solve everything immediately but sometimes it's not possible so if uh, if i have some problems and i do not know the solution yet and i can't wait then i think oh then i get sick hmm. still now it's <laughs> a belief it's a belief S- somewhere but, we picked up but nowadays i'm able to realize it i'm very grateful for that hmm. this also came through the whole fibromyalgia fibromyalgia process i realized that this is a deep seated pattern hmm. a better to get sick Uh, then someone needs to care me and then I'm not forced to wait, to be patient and to find, to find that solution. Hmm. And Looking this is something I see in all those uh, patients who come to me for a coaching se- session. They have the same pattern, hmm. all of them. Uh, it's interesting when you say I was like a victim. Hmm. I think what people say when they are in a space of victim is i feel helpless yes and yes. i'm not responsible for yeah. my change yeah so exactly. two things so one is they are able to 
put the blame on somebody else yes second it gives them a sense of identity yeah and a kind of attention yeah that i don't have to do that yeah but definitely there are situations where people get into trouble or accidents mm-hmm. where somebody else is responsible for what that mm-hmm. person went through like drunken driver mm-hmm. killing someone it's a terrible situation yeah. but if you look at it from a very conscious living approach many people think being a victim is much easier approach and because they just never saw the other side of it yeah. this was much easier to continue that mm-hmm. what will be the way to come out of this victim mindset first of all you need to be very honest towards yourself mm. you need to really admit yes i'm playing the role of a victim mm. i'm playing it that's the big difference uh, i'm being aware of that uh, i am somewhere playing the role of yes, a victim yes i'm playing the role of a victim if you're not aware of it then there is no chance to come out of it because uh, you do not even realize that you are the victim you need to say that what i have learned is through all those years you need to stop judging whatever happens mm. so i would say don't judge being a victim it's like um you you should you should uh, see it like yes till now i played the role of a victim like i say yes here is a table without judging mm-hmm. whether i like that table or not it doesn't matter yes i played the role of a victim and then you do not you are not connected to all those emotions which um which brought you in into that bad situation mm-hmm. the, the moment all those uh, emotions are coming up you are lost then there is uh, no way to come out of it but if you can say yes i'm honest towards myself now i'm playing the role of a victim that's the first step i think that itself will heal you out exactly. of it exactly yeah it it it's such a powerful powerful approach. Uh, sentence yeah and then and then you can continue and can say okay if there is uh, the role of a victim um it's like uh, i i i played it uh, my whole life it's like always driving the same highway to the to the same destination mm. Okay. Now I have the chance to make a new decision. Instead of going to Rome every day, let's go to Paris today. <laughs> It's like that. So I just need to uh, change the destination. I I choose another highway. So what could be the next destination instead of playing a, a victim? What do I really wish instead of being a victim? and that's uh, this can be all kind of things every person is so so different and so individual let's say i wish instead of being a victim i wish uh, some freedom mm-hmm. or i wish um being a light for others or whatever mm-hmm. it can be everything and then you can say, okay i wish some freedom that's the new highway i'm driving on mm-hmm. or i wish to drive on how can i reach that that's a way of transformation actually now i know it's very very easy mm-hmm. but as long as you do not know how it can work you think that will never happen mm-hmm. it's like i have a, a huge rock to move and i do not have uh, enough power mm-hmm. but if you are clear and you know what you really wish then you will find the way because what you wish is already inside yourself so let's say i wish more freedom you have that freedom already inside yourself and definitely every person has made already um, a deep experience with the freedom or whatever it is mm-hmm. and then you just have to look back and think what was it what what uh, in what kind of um, state uh, did i experience it is there any certain a situation i still remember and then you can you can uh, activate that memory and think of it and meditate on it and and um playing with it it's all a game mm. <laughs> we should never forget that playing with that experience and that's what i mean with changing the highway mm-hmm. you are leaving the one with the victim towards uh, the the freedom 
uh, because you have that experience already. And, and uh, transformation is always learning, and learning has always to do with the three dimensions. We need to have, we need to do it with our logical mind, we need to have some emotions, and we need to really physically do it. Yes. Otherwise... All three have to come together. Yes. yes. Otherwise, the n- learning cannot happen. I think once you come out of the victim mindset, another thing is somewhere you're also reaching a point that I am responsible for my life. Mm. On one hand, it can be very powerful. Yeah. On one hand, it can <coughs> be quite a fearful yes. state as well yes. because you have to take charge of your life. Yeah. yeah. But usually, and uh, I forgot the name of the author, but there's this book called Love, Medicine and Miracles. I think it's Dr. Bernie Siegel. Mm-hmm. He talks about some of the patients who recovered from terminal cancer, who yeah. were diagnosed with terminal yes. diseases, and th- but they came out of that yeah. ultimatum yeah. given by the doctors or the medical yeah. team. And he was trying to find what was common between these patients mm-hmm. who were recovered from that. And yeah. he, there was one thing. They all took complete responsibility for their life. Mm. <laughs> they said, from <coughs> now on, I am responsible for my life. Yeah. I'm not going to let any other person or an event or an incident or government or mm. a teacher or my childhood trauma mm. going to interfere yes. with myself and my yes. future. Yeah. And that was a very powerful turning. Yes. And it's just a decision. Yes, I can absolutely relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> for me, I was... Uh, now, I'm very careful with the words I choose for that. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, as you know, you grow up... Uh, with so many different kind of judgments and there are so when so many expressions which are connected already deeply with uh, uh, common beliefs and and judgments so so i always try to be very neutral in what i choose for myself and also when i'm working with my my clients because that helps a lot hmm. for some people saying the sentence i'm responsible for myself uh, is even already too much. Mm. It's too much because they connected with something dramatically which had happened in their life or with something bad or whatever. So I tried to find um, words and sentences which makes it, uh, how can I explain it? Easier. Which, which activates their motivation. Mm. To be responsible. To be responsible, yeah. And do, would you say fibromyalgia has a lot to do with victim mindset? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's a very hard truth. Yeah, yeah, it is. And mm. once you can accept that, I mean, this is actually not to accept the disease. It's uh, accepting how you uh, go through your, your life mm-hmm. with your with what kind of patterns. And if you can accept this, and this can be very easy, very easy, but you need... Of course, you need help for help, that. Help, yes. Yeah. And learning to ask for yes, help. Yes, yes. There's one thing that you see common when you... F- how to know if you are a victim? You tend to complain a lot. Yes. About yeah. the things that you cannot change. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the first That's uh, yeah. symptom of yes. that you're a victim. Yeah. You yeah. keep complaining about why this, this and this. Yeah. And why does this happen to me? Hmm. <laughs> not to someone else why am i in yeah. such a in such a difficult situation, situation yes so many things uh, were so bad in my life mm. why always me yeah. so instead of asking I, I sometimes this is one of the questions you know patient mm. w- but doctor why me mm. what did i do yeah mm. so so i would say instead of asking the question why me how about we rephrase the question what is this teaching me yeah yeah. What is it that I need to learn from yes. this? Yes. You know, that will have a profound difference yeah. Yeah. in your same approach. Yeah. Yeah. Because why me is such a terrible question. A terrible. Because it doesn't get you anywhere other than the fact that something is terribly wrong with you all yes. the time. Yes. And you are yeah. unlucky you lost the genetic yeah. lottery. Yeah. This there, is there is no solution. Exactly. Possible. Yeah. No solution. So and you're just reinforcing <coughs> that yeah. mentality, yes. which is not true. Yes, exactly. I, you make your own patterns even stronger. Yes. Yeah. Unhealthy patterns. Unhealthy patterns, yes. So, Sabine, where did Ayurveda come into your life? It came when I was uh, searching for another method of healing. Mm-hmm. The fact that I was 100% sure I once will be cured, 
made me searching. And, and Ayurveda was one of your yes, recommendations. Yes, absolutely. Because I, uh, all the things I read about Ayurveda, it gave me a feeling like being home. Mm. It, it was very familiar to me. However, I didn't really know about all the things in Ayurveda, but it, I felt very familiar to that. And I had that belief, it will heal me. Mm. Now, when you look back, I think the first time you came to Sitaram, it was 2015, mm -hmm. I think. What do you think in those three to four weeks that you stayed? And then I think you did, you did come back the year after that as well. But when you look back, what do you think helped you to recover? What was it in Ayurveda that you think contributed to your recovery? Mm. First of all, I need to say, uh, because others asked me, why did you go to India? Mm -hmm. Ayurveda is offered in so many places in Europe, but I had the feeling I need to go somewhere where there is no connection anymore to to my home, to my environment, because everything which is still connected with that. It's a new system, like yes, a, a new setup, a new setup. Something totally different. Mm. And I still believe 100% in that, that step was necessary. Mm. However, when I think back, I think, oh, this was not okay, and this was not okay. But, but still, I, I know it, I had to do that. It was like jumping into another a, yes. water without knowing the depth. Yes, yes. Not knowing what will come, but I had to do that. Mm. And exactly not knowing what will come, that was the transformational point. Somewhere it also tells you that there is a world outside of yes. the pond that you are living. Yes, and I need to discover it mm. because this has to do with my, with my character. Mm. I'm a person who likes to... Uh, discover the world mm. actually I like adventures and going to India that was really an adventure for me mm. if someone would have told me uh, within 10 years you will travel to India every every year I would have said never ever because India was a country I was scared of it I mm, it's a stereotype say. about India yes, somewhere yes, the media I've talks about yes, all the bad things yeah, rather than so the many good bad things. things yes you're right so actually I was scared uh, my friend said are you crazy? Do the Ayurveda treatment here? Well, why are you going to India? I said, no, I need to do that. Mm. And it was the right decision. And <coughs> going through the treatment, yes. like we did multiple treatments, yes. what do you think helped you? The care. Mm. It was, I mean, the, of course, there is the treatment, uh, which is good for so many different kinds of symptoms, but receiving the care of the therapists that was touching me so deeply mm. that was I, I had the feeling being a little child mm -hmm. and whatever I need they fulfill mm. and I do not even tell it they feel it mm. they touch my body and they know exactly what they have to do mm. the care was overwhelming for me somewhere feeling pampered and yes I don't have to take care there is somebody who will take care yes. of me yes. that yes. feeling it's okay to receive yes and I, that's why I, I told you before, I enjoyed to be the weak person. Mm. I enjoyed it. I, I realized uh, how, how good it is to feel so weak and just let others help me. So if I rephrase it, so you know, some people when they hear uh, how good it is to be weak, yeah. they will think, um, is this person nuts? <laughs> yeah. But but uh, maybe what we what you mean by saying weak is staying at a position where it's okay to receive help. Yes, yeah. I think that's what you mean by yes. yes. Uh, yeah. that weak as per se is not something that is something is wrong with you. It's just no, 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 no. it's okay to ask for help and yes. stay at a position where yes. that you don't have to always figure it out by yourself. Yes, and and that there is someone who offers you the hand. Mm. It's like if when you have a little child and it learns to walk and you offer the hand and say, come hold my hand and then let's do it together. And I was in that position and because I never experienced it in my life. I mean, I experienced it of course when I was a child, but as far as I remember uh, when I was uh, growing and maybe there were so many situations, I would have needed that help, mm. but maybe I didn't. 
want to accept it because I had to be that strong uh, woman. So to experience this was so new and I realized it's so good. Mm. It's so good. I can imagine. Yeah. You know, one thing I have noticed, some patients, when they have difficulty asking for help, mm. they do have a lot of trust issues. Yeah. Somewhere I cannot trust only if I figure it out yes. and I know it and I can control it, yes. yeah. I can trust it. Yeah. Otherwise, how do I know? How yeah. can I trust? Yes. So somewhere, this is also a message that it's okay to trust. Yeah. Okay, maybe things will go wrong, but it's okay. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. The fact that I made the decision for Ayurveda, I had the trust already mm. because I was reading so many things about Ayurveda and I thought, yes. That's, I, I know it. This is exactly uh, the method I need. Hmm. I was 100% convinced. So there, there was not uh, the question of trust anymore. When I came to Sitaram and I met you and I met the therapist, I knew all of you. I can trust 100%. Hmm. And Sabine, would you say during the treatment you got the relief or treatment helped you one aspect of it? And... To what extent did it help you? And would you recommend people with fibromyalgia to do Ayurveda? Or it's maybe they don't need to do Ayurveda, just some mental shifts. You know, coming to India and doing these treatments can be quite uh, an expensive trip. Unless some people have good insurance policy mm. that also covers mm. that. But other than that, people who cannot come and do Ayurveda. But first, let's just understand how to what extent did ayurveda help you and was it like it completely cured you or flare ups did come back and you have to relearn certain things so how was your recovery journey mm. with ayurveda first of all all the the physical treatments helped me to uh, to reduce the pain level mm -hmm. however the treatments have been painful mm -hmm. at that time uh, but at the end, I realized it's helping me to release the pain level. Um, and of course, not everybody needs to come to India and to do, do uh, needs to do the treatment there, or not everybody needs uh, um, Ayurveda. Uh, also, uh, a shift in, in in the mindset, consciousness, yes, and what? can can uh, cure it as well. I'm I'm quite uh, convinced. I need it both. Mm -hmm. I need it both, and I still remember there was one situation. I talked to your former colleague the, uh, at that time, and actually he he came and wanted to ask me some questions. What kind of medicine we could. Uh, we could choose for me and I was not yet cured, but I, I felt it's getting better. Mm -hmm. And and it was um, it was just a, a talk between friends, I felt. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized I, I talked about all the all the things which have been bothering me my whole life. Mm. And I was crying a lot. And after a while and he was just listening. Mm -hmm. He didn't comment it at all. He didn't say, hey, you should think like this and you can come out of it. He was just listening. And this is something which I still carry inside me since that time. Mm -hmm. Having a good listener is so is powerful. So powerful. It's extremely powerful. And after a while, I realized that I'm, all, uh, that I'm continuously complaining. Mm -hmm. And then I made a, a cut and I said, now you think I'm a very negative person but actually I'm an absolutely optimistic person mm. I have always been in my life otherwise I would not have uh, had the belief that I can get mm. uh, cured and and then he said okay now I know enough about your story and it's the weekend is coming and during the weekend I will find the right medicine for you. Mm -hmm. I will have a talk to my father, who is also an Ayurvedic doctor, and some other doctors who have some experiences with, uh, with Ayurveda. And then I thought, I believe him. Mm -hmm. I believe him. Suddenly that, was, trust. that was in me. Mm -hmm. I still do not know how it came, but it, it happened. Mm -hmm. And this is also something. Uh, let things happen. I had to learn. I had to learn. Mm. I was the kind of person I I wanted to control. Mm. Um, yeah, 
I was a bit the controller. And at that time, I realized controlling is not possible anymore because my body does what it wants. It's out of my control. And um, yeah, and I had the, the deep trust we will find the right medicine. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the, the, the treatments went so well already, it made the trust even stronger that if I take some uh, Ayurvedic medicine, I can get cured. Mm -hmm. And it happened like, it, it was like a wonder because after the weekend he came back and he said, I have the right medicine and you need to take it three times a day. And I did it one day and the first night, I was in a deep sleep the whole night. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up in the morning, I thought, is it the reality? I mm -hmm. slept the whole night. Finally. Finally. And I do not feel pains. Mm -hmm. But if I get up now, that's the test. Mm. It will be there. Mm. And I got up and I could walk normally. And there the was pain was not there. The pain was not there. It was like a wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Now, after doing the panchakarma, did you have any flare-ups or it came back and yes. what triggered you and what was your insight when you look back? Mm. What triggered you and what helped you to, you know, calm it mm, down? Mm. I mean, the pain. Yeah. Uh, it was, I think, f for a period of two years, it was going up and down, but it was not that bad anymore that it was when I came to, to Sitaram. So I took the medicine, I practiced yoga, but I realized I have to do everything in a very, let's say, mild way. Mm. I realized that my yoga praxis for me, it was too intense mm. for my body. Uh, you need to slow it down. Yeah, I had to slow it down. And also I worked too much. I I had to, to think of it, how can I manage my, my coaching sessions uh, with the family and the household. And I, I got the deep insight that I was absolutely overworked. Mm. So many things I, I started to ask about my life, but not in a, in a self-punishing way. Mm. Not anymore like I did it before, this is bad and this is bad and this is bad. I just asked myself, is that good for you? Should I do that? Do I really wish to do that? Is that uh, really, is that my character? Mm -hmm. Is that my talent? So many different kind of questions. It came up. Yeah. And what did you find asking these questions? What was your finding? Uh, I found out that for uh, many, many years, I didn't live the life I am, I, you I'm, on, I'm on earth for, I mm. had the feeling, I, I, I thought uh, I had, I mean, I, I can't say that I had a bad life. It was really not bad, but it was not the life I really was dreaming about, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize it before. So the fact going to India and starting traveling, I realized how much I love traveling, how much I love meeting people. Mm -hmm. That's one of my f my favorite things in life. Mm -hmm. When I'm traveling, okay, I'm um, uh, visiting cultural, historical buildings, but this is not the most important. It's uh, actually wherever I go, I have a nice conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. And then I discover, oh, this person is very interesting. The life is very interesting. And suddenly we stay connected and suddenly we get good friends and then we visit us. And so many things in my life happened I would never have expected. Mm -hmm. I, I can say I changed my life totally. And I can also see, um, you know, your new passion with painting. Yes. Now tell us about this because I see a lot of women yeah. And also men as well. But uh, what I mean to say is, after they reach a certain age, mm. some people somehow find a way to get into a new hobby. Mm. Like, for example, my mother started learning an instrument. Mm. And I can see the impact it has mm. on her. 
and some people they just don't find they just feel oh i'm old and mm. nothing happens yeah and i'm sure this has an impact on their well being and yes. all of that yes but you found painting at a very late stage i think post 50 Yes, uh, uh, actually two years, three years ago. It yeah, was three during years, COVID times. Yeah, two COVID times. So yeah. it was like in your late 50s that yeah. you figured out yeah. uh, your painting. Yeah, actually in my 60s. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> 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 so it, it, to find that passion and then now you are putting your uh, paintings into multiple mm-hmm. uh, events yeah. and you've been invited to yes. showcase your paintings. and i would definitely like to show some of your paintings in the uh, podcast in the in the youtube now what was it that got you there i'm sure we cannot find a formula this no. if you do this this and this no. and suddenly yeah. one day you'll get up and you'll have like the archimedes uh, hallelujah yeah, eureka yeah. Uh, time yeah but what was it that mindset that you found okay mm. i didn't realize i could paint yeah the it the, uh, the fact that uh, during my disease uh, i had to give up the control i learned letting things happen mm. and uh, so when i was in sitaram letting things happen meant uh, trusting the therapist trusting the doctors and and see what what's going on so this is something i still uh, do in my life now and so covid came and i thought okay what can i do nothing i i'm i need to follow the rules uh, which uh, the government made but just sitting here and doing nothing that's too boring and i always had the feeling since a few years that i need to do something with my hands mm-hmm. but actually i did not know what um this is like it's the same inner voice which told me you have to go to india you you get cured uh, by ayurveda uh and now it's time to do something with your hands mm. and then uh i had a, a friend with me and i i told her I, i i feel that urge but i do not know and she said uh she said out of a sudden she said i know it you need to paint i said no i'm not able to paint yes you need to paint and i was thinking of that and that thought was circling in my mind and going on and going on and finally i bought some colors and my family they gave me so much support my husband my boys they said yes we are quite sure you're so creative started and that's all i did hmm. so it came and then i felt the passion it's coming so now it it also helps me to to have a different view on the world bec- on on colors if i'm uh, in the nature i see colors i never saw before hmm. that's really amazing and the fact that i'm an abstract painter so i'm actually painting emotions vibrations energy whenever i meet interesting people i see already inside myself the colors and i feel the urge already oh i need to i need to make a painting of this situation hmm. so traveling is great for me so many different kind of impressions so sometimes i wish i have my my colors and my canvas with me to start immediately mm. it's uh, i'm very excited about that I and mean, your story is a classic example of age is just a number yeah that you can really start a new hobby even yeah. in your 60s yes yes and you will find that new children child like passion yes. come back yes yeah it's, it's uh, yeah i'm i'm in the side of a child when i'm painting because i forget the world around me i forget even having food i'm just in my in my painting mm. world and would you say you're completely cured from fibromyalgia yes you don't I have those pains anymore no no i can say it because once yeah i i, I would say after 2 years of uh, treatments and taking the ayurvedic medicine i once was in my my living room and then i was thinking of fibromyalgia and then i thought um I tried to remember how the pain felt mm. and I could not remember anymore. So you have a new benchmark yes, of I, that relaxed state. Yes, I knew state. it was it was severe and it was terrible for me but I could not come into that feeling anymore. So I knew that is deleted in my mind. Mm. It's like you you are having a, a birth and after the baby is born 
all the pains are gone and you know the pains were heavy but you can't actually feel it anymore. Mm. If you have a headache, you know exactly, ah, it feels like that. But with the fibromyalgia, I'm so far away from it. I really, it's not possible for me to come in that feeling anymore. So let's say somebody gets diagnosed with fibromyalgia. What would you recommend if they do the right things? What would be an ideal timeline that they should keep in mind? Sometimes what happens is patient comes and says, now one of the things I want to make it very clear in this interview is people should not misunderstand just by doing Ayurveda the fibromyalgia no, will just go away no. it's just one part of yes, it yes and there are multiple other things yes. they have to change their mindset they have yeah. to take responsibility in yes. their own life decisions yeah. they need to learn to communicate mm. openly about their needs and wants yes, yes and then finding some new passions yeah and as you said trying to come out of your ecosystem yeah. to see something else yes. so that you can go back and have a different approach to that yeah, yeah. you know all of this put together yeah. that is why it can otherwise it could have been solved with taking a pill yeah. or the doctor yeah. could have solved it yeah. long time ago but yeah. these are the things that fall outside of mm. the a doctor's yes. prescription yeah and all these prescriptions has to be self prescribed yes. in your life yeah. with communication and all of yeah. that so knowing that what should be the timeline that they should keep in mind altogether i would say minimum 2 years minimum 2 years yes 2 years is a very good time if yeah. they do the right things yes yes but first most important thing keep that intent this is not a incurable disease yes. that's really very important because when uh, at the time i i still uh, was uh, meeting the allopathy doctors and i i went to some uh, talks and so many uh, patients were there and oh my god i i saw how they suffered some of them were already sitting in a wheelchair they could not walk anymore some of them uh, lost um could not see anymore because eyes are getting very bad that i also experienced uh, there was a time i thought i'm getting blind mm. because it was uh, it, it was rapidly getting worse and <clears throat> when the discussions went on during that talk i realized that uh, i would say 99% of those patients they just uh, have been attending that talk to find out how to get uh, a pension how how to manage it not to to work anymore because actually they were not able it's just about managing the disease mm. and then i asked uh, uh, once the doctor said and how about uh, to cure it mm -hmm. i i'm here be because i want to hear something about how to cure it and then he was totally shocked he did not expect such a such a question so that was the moment i knew this is what i have deep inside me and these people they don't have i know i will be cured mm. i don't know where it came from but i had that strong belief and if you don't have that belief nothing will work as i always say whenever a patient gets a diagnosis and they go to internet and find that this disease is incurable yeah I tell them you need to rephrase it whoever said it's incurable it's they couldn't yet exactly. find a cure yes yes it doesn't mean the rest of the world cannot yes. cure it or yeah. you may not be able to cure yeah, it yeah exactly maybe it's a self limiting disease yeah. you know yeah. or sometimes a yeah. little bit of self care and yeah. doing the right protocols yeah. better nutrition better yeah. emotional health yeah. doing some therapies like ayurveda or even better movement techniques yeah. itself can reverse yeah. it yeah actually that uh, disease made me very curious again i i forgot about that because if you are becoming such a controlling person actually you miss the best part of your life mm. so i i got so curious and and i always uh, thought oh i'm scared about this and that i i do not have the courage to travel alone and then i realized hey i'm a very courageous person mm. <laughs> i can do that on my own i i do not fear actually anything when i'm traveling i always have that uh, deep belief that i just meet nice people only nice things will happen and it is like that that's a good belief too yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right so we close down 
and in your last journeys ever since you got diagnosed with fibromyalgia if there is one profound wisdom that you got out of it what would that be there are multiple but what is very close to you the the you you mean the most important transformational thing. aha uh-huh. moment yeah it's the belief in deep love hmm. actually yeah i got uh, reminded to that this time again when i had my purgation because after the purgation i'm always in kind of a meditative state and during that meditation i was reminded to a dream i once had and that i will never forget it was also during my disease i think it was kind of a spiritual awakening as well i had uh, such an intense feeling of love mm. to everything and everybody and there was an imagination how the world would be if everybody could feel it how great and how wonderful life would be mm. and of course if we are in our uh, daily program i forget about it of course so it was good to have that reminder again whatever i do do it out of that deep love yeah. like what we are doing right now yes <laughs> <laughs> so before we conclude i would just like to give my <coughs> I'm sure many people will put in the comments how does ayurveda help even if it helps a mm-hmm. little bit. So going through many fibromyalgia patients treating them and seeing some people recover some people mm-hmm. did not. Uh, not many doctors talk about their failures openly but yeah. it actually happens. Yeah. So when I analyze and all of that what I see is when they come for a good 2 to 3 week or even 4 week stay especially with fibromyalgia What happens is first thing as you said they move out of their current situation. Yes. Maybe they are out of their triggers. Mm. So what I also tell them is if work some people get fibromyalgia because of the work life mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. because they have toxic relationship in the work yeah. and other things. So I tell them completely disconnect from your work yeah. and come to a fresh new situation. Yeah. yeah. That itself is a very big healing yes. step. Yes. and then as as I, as you said you know coming to a new country mm. new people mm. uh, a lot of people with care love and touch yeah. and you are completely taken care mm. you don't have to make any decision yeah. this itself is part of the healing yeah because you don't have to make any decisions exactly because decision is a very expensive process mm. for our brain to mm. do mm. so when they come usually if you look at what a person does at home especially if a woman with who is a wife who has children and husband and multiple other jobs even the same with a husband who has jobs and has to deal with the family there's a lot of decisions that everybody has to do on yes. a daily basis yeah. Yeah. like what should we plan for mm-hmm. the next month and especially if you come from a place where there's extreme climates yeah. you need to prepare for the winter mm-hmm. we need to prepare for the other climates mm-hmm. what is going to happen so here we just have to worry about the rains but uh, <laughs> other than but i'm just saying in different places yeah. you have different needs to make yeah. the decision so first thing that happens if they are in a state of trusting mm. we can really help them to avoid the decision yeah. making yeah. so that decision making eliminating for 2 to 3 weeks itself is a big healing therapy yes. yes and on top of that when we do the therapies what we do is we try to retrain the body to relax mm. like some of the kiri massage where we do the punch mm-hmm. massages with the herbs and some people we do the massa oil massage some people we do shirodara mm. and the dara over the body all these are methods to let go of the inflammation some people will have the water retention and along with that we do the panchakarma where we cleanse the internal excess mm. mucus and the ama mm. to be out yeah. depending on the situation depending on the stage what the patient mm. is and then you are eating on time sleeping on time mm. you're connecting with nature and all of this put together suddenly they get time to think for themselves yes. and that is when they think oh maybe i should just quit the job yeah <laughs> or maybe i should not continue what i am in mm. maybe i should not speak to that friend anymore yeah. who is very toxic yeah. you know yeah. all these aha moments come yes. to them and i still remember many of the patients in the last consultation so this is one 
favorite question that I ask. So what's your takeaway? What did you learn from this? I know so many people who said I'm going back and quitting the job. Yeah. Some people say I'm going imagine. back and separating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people said now I know what I want mm. and now I know what I don't want. Mm. Because finally they realize I never felt so good in my body. Yes. And that with all the other protocols when they continue this and reverse certain conditions over one or two years that is when finally they feel the pain has gone mm. now i am much more relaxed mm. my muscles are much uh, easy going yeah. not like yeah. how it used to be yeah. and they say that my jaws are relaxed my neck is relaxed mm. some people have different pains in different parts of mm. the body and overall they put and finally they find a new passion yeah. or they find uh, they become a blogger mm. or an artist mm. or they find a new passion in singing yeah i know so many people who took up singing in their 50s yeah. and they went on to become like a am, even though amateur but very good yeah. well known singers so it's fibromyalgia is i think one of the greatest awakenings a person can have mm. Mm. this is what i find yeah. likewise in many other diseases as well mm. but especially with fibromyalgia it's the way the body is saying i am done with the bullshit yes. you know, yes. i need to change <laughs> yeah. that is what that is what i figure it mm. out with mm. all of that yeah i absolutely agree yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much sabine and i hope many people will enjoy this episode and share this with people whom whom you think will need it and please do subscribe thank you